start streaming. Send. All right, the message has been sent in all of the channels and texts. And we should be live on Showtime. I'm clicking the stream just to make sure. What's up, what's up, what's up, everybody? I got Brandon in the house today. What's Let me know on? once you hop in if the audio is good. FUD, I see you are first in my channel. Brandon, are you live on your channel too? Hey, well, in two seconds I will be. Okay, okay. Good morning, Synapti. I see you're starting to clock in early too. John, Thomas, good morning, everybody. I'm not seeing some of my usual names in here. Uh-oh, we got a new crowd, it looks like. Good morning, everybody. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of jump right into the watch list here for you. So I appreciate you clicking that like button early on for us. Oh, there's Dan. I was wondering where Dan would pop up and lore. All right, now we got some of the, the regulars in here. Um, let's get right into it. So I got DYNT pulled up on screen here. It has already formed a new pre-market high and since pulled back, which gives us our levels that we're going to want to play. This one, let's see, obviously a dollar is going to be psychological resistance on it. So I want to identify from the level of our pre-market high to a dollar how big that channel is going to be. The pre-market high, the high of the, or the top of the highest candle, man, I... Uh, I'm a little behind, I guess, mentally this morning. The top of the body of the highest candle is at 84 cents. From 84 cents to about a dollar is about an 18% trading channel. I would consider that good enough to trade. So we're going to want to see DYNT break 84 cents here. How I draw that trading strategy just to visualize it. Um, in this market, I've only been doing like a 6% loading window, 5 or 6%, and I've only been doing like a 10 or 12% take profit window, especially with this one being at like a dollar. It doesn't necessarily mean it'll hit a dollar and then get rejected, but it could get close to a dollar and then get rejected. So in this one's case, maybe a 15% take profit window and then a 5% stop loss window. This market that we've been in for the last month or so has not been giving us many several hundred percent runners, not even many 50s and 40s. So knowing that we're in tighter profit windows, we have to be taking tighter profit. So that's why I'm doing like a five or six percent loading window, call it a 10 to 15 percent take profit window, and of course always a five percent stop loss just in case the trade doesn't go our way. And then for the rest of it, I'm just going to rattle through the rest of the watch list here. Um, Weeble Top Gainers here, WISA. If you are playing it as a breakout strategy, we're looking for 303 as the next break. Moving right down the list here. This one I'm going to keep off the list for now. I don't think anything's going to happen with it. You could look for DFLI to maybe come back up and break above this VWAP. Or if it continues this downtrend, you could look for a bounce off of this 200 EMA, which is kind of what I'm thinking may or may not happen. So look for it to kind of bounce off of this 200 EMA. It may come up here and approach the VWAP territory again. That's a clearly defined channel. And that's a 15% channel. So you could look to play it as a bounce or a break out of the VWAP. That would be the two different ways I'd play DFLI. Um, I would skip this one. This one is telling me that the market gave it a new valuation. You can see how it was just horizontally trading sideways in this channel for the longest time. And then all of a sudden it popped up for who knows what reason. It popped up and immediately started trading sideways again with very little volume is what all these dots mean. That tells me the market makers just decided to give it a new valuation. That doesn't mean that's going to continue running or anything like that. Market makers just decided it's worth more than it was yesterday. Um, this one is too fucking ugly. Look at these candles. What do you make of these candles, Brendan? You're more of a candle expert than me. All these on BRTX. Look at those ugly fucking long and bottom wicks on all of these. Yeah, I mean, the top wicks are definitely a lot longer, but I mean, you know, if they were more even, I'd call them dojis, but really with those long, long top wicks, I'd say uh, tons of selling pressure. I keep trying to push it up and break through some of those highs there at, what's that, like 2.1, and uh, keeps getting rejected off that level. Sellers just pushing it way, way back down, but buyers holding it, also trying to hold it up above uh, whatever EMA that is there. Looks like we're breaking it right now, though. Yeah, about the 13 EMA. Um, I just don't like that. Each one of these wicks represents about 30% on most of these candles. That one's gross to play. Um, 
Yeah, let me get through the rest of the watch list here, and then we'll get into a couple questions I see in my chat. Um, SPCB, this one was good for us yesterday. Yesterday we played SPC uh, at the 36 cent level, went up to 54 cent. Right now I'd say we are looking for the break of 53 cents. Really like 52.7, but we're gonna call it 53 as a nice round number. So SPCB, we're gonna wanna see this one break 53 cents. Draw your trading strategy out on all of them just like we do because in the pre-market, and this is going to answer one of these questions I see from Jesus here, can you set a stop loss in the pre-market? No, you cannot. And that is why I draw these boxes on my screen because you have to use a limit buy order and a limit sell order to get in and out of your positions. So knowing that you have to know the exact price in which you need to buy and sell, these boxes really help me visualize where those prices are at and it helps me trigger my limit order that much quicker because the um, stop loss is not going to work in the pre-market. Um, moving down the list here, that may have been the whole watch list. PRZO had a little pop and then immediately plummeted back down. Yeah, that's it for the whole watch list there. Where can you buy this stock? Well, I just went through like 10 stocks. Cue the cartage. I don't know which one you were referring to when you asked that. Um, but you can buy all of these on Weeble. That's what I'm using right here to show you guys is Weeble Desktop. And you can buy them straight from your app as well. Weeble allows you to trade all NYSE, New York Stock Exchange stocks, and NASDAQ stocks. If you want to trade OTC stocks, you're going to need a big boy broker like Think or Swim, Charles Schwab, Fidelity. Um, I believe Brendan primarily trades with Think or Swim, and that used to be my favorite platform as well. But honestly, I, I kind of lean towards Weeble these days. Yeah, I like Think or Swim, really. Oh, Pally is exploding. Is, uh... Definitely probably the best, like, in the middle as far as uh, ease of use and also tons of features. Pally is exploding here. I would wait for pullback, and wherever that pullback occurs, I'd draw a horizontal line at the top of the body of the highest candle, wherever that may be, and that would be my next breakout opportunity on it. But that is such a massive green candle there. Actually, the old high from a couple days ago was at 689 and it's flirting with breaking that as we speak. Looks like this is a biotech. Just have to kind of wait and see what it does here. The only other way you could play it is if you're a degen, you could look to scalp it. That's where you're gonna like basically just try to enter right now and get a one to 5% profit. And even as we speak, if you entered right now, right when I said right now, it already went up 5%. Um, scalps are very quick. Often they're intra-second or intra-minute plays, meaning you're getting out within a few minutes, maybe less than a few minutes in some cases. Um, you can try to scalp these ones as they see a lot of momentum as we're seeing right now, but they're risky. And even if you're gonna do a scalp, you still have a stop loss in mind. Where are you gonna cut your loss in case it starts to plummet down? But for me, it already ran so quick, so fast, and it's already seeing some resistance here in this high 750 to 780 area that I'd probably rather just wait for confirmation, wait for it to pull back, and then set um, the next strategy, if you will, like the next breakout on it. But that is what we are watching so far this morning. And you guys just saw how quick it is to get this entire watch list going. You did the whole watch list with me here this morning within the last few minutes. And I woke up with you guys because my wife gave me my kid this morning as I went to head out to the gym. So I got to do my watch list right there live with you. That's how quick it should take once you get into the swing of this. PRSO, um, you could put this one on watch as well. I'd put it at like 207. Anything else you're watching yet this morning, Brennan? Um, 
I think you covered most of it there, but a big thing is in the broader market on the SPY. So um, what was that? Probably last week at some point, we were going live talking about the SPY on the daily chart. We were talking about this big channel that they were in. Um, you know, Then we broke through the channel to the downside. We said this thing could possibly come up and retest that channel, which it did three times, and then immediately started to get rejected. And our very first level that it would come that it could come down to was 503.79, which is literally where we're bouncing from right now. And this is a super important level because it's the start of the gap. So over on the daily chart here, there's a nice gap from 503.79 all the way down to 497.39. So we came down, we took the top of this gap now right now currently if you would drop down to a lower time frame chart we're bouncing off of this right here so we'll see if we end up bouncing from the top of this gap and it starts to go up or if it ultimately breaks through this and we actually go down to fill this gap but i will say as soon as this thing breaks like like um if it if the market opens today and we open below like 50379 whatever somewhere around that level it doesn't have to be 50379 on the dot but really under uh where this gap started like in the gap at all if we open down there then i think the gap is definitely going to fill probably today down to 49739 but yeah so, I mean, this play literally played out perfectly from a break of the channel all the way down to the top of the gap there. Now there's two opportunities from here. We're either going to bounce off of this level or we're going to ultimately break through and fill the gap down to 497. Just react to however the daily candlestick opens. Yeah, so, you, you yeah. called that. So, I still had all the lines drawn from the last time we talked about it. You called that perfectly. Yeah, that was a sweet play right there. Leave me a uh, or drop down in the comments, guys. Were any of you guys able to catch that? I know most of you guys are playing the smaller NASDAQ stocks, but any of you guys catch that big move on SPY? Trinity says aloha from Michigan. Um, I'm sorry, but I just threw up in my mouth. I'm sorry, I hate Michigan. I got a lot of family from Michigan, and I'm from very northern Indiana, just a literally a few minutes south of Michigan. Um, I don't know; it's beautiful, but it's poor. <laughs> Michigan hasn't been great since Motor City left. Yeah, I've been to Michigan once. I think there, there's definitely a couple of nice areas up there, right? Yeah, I mean, it is. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> Michigan's a beautiful state, and it's good people. Um, I like Midwest people, but I don't know. I just I don't like Detroit. I don't like Flint. I got fam family from Flint, Michigan. That's one of the poorest, most dilapidated cities you'll ever see in America. Their water supply has been poisoned for like the last 50 years. There for a while, it was making national news every single day about the atrocious quality of Michigan's water, uh, of Flint, Michigan's water. And now it's like 20 years later and that shit still isn't fixed. It was a national tragedy and they still haven't fixed it. And that kind of sums up most of Michigan, if you will. <laughs> yeah, I think, uh, I think I drove through Flint and it was pretty rough. Yep, I see. I got a couple people making money already this morning. Ken up 9%. Um, Ivanka Relinas. Sorry if I butchered that already up 20 percent this morning robert says he's up 900 percent on on his spy puts holy shit 900 percent on a spy put or he said multiple puts too goes from that uh channel break but that channel break would have definitely got 900 percent right there holy cow depending on uh you know the, the greeks but what contract and everything Um, Wall Street's well, two questions. Hey, Brendan, do you know what Finviz is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, J Baby says, "What's your thoughts on Finviz?" I've actually never heard of it. And he says, "Do you use the stock screeners for any strategies?" You never heard of Finviz? You had to be on this site before. Um, they talk. There's a lot of stuff about short interest and stuff on that site. Um, yeah, I have played around with the stock screeners a couple times. It's great, right? I mean, you can set basically, you know, whatever parameters you want. Um, you know, you just have to know the right parameters to set for it to provide you good stuff. But um, yeah, I mean, I do like Finvis. Um, yeah, and I think using their screeners is great. Yeah, I like it. 
Oh, look at Pally. As I'm bouncing around the stocks here again, as I said, you could look to scalp it. And even when I said right now, so if you loaded anywhere near that time frame, you're already up 13% on Pally as a scalp. Anybody make money on that one? Or is everybody just waiting for the pullback? And then somebody asked how you and I met. I think it started with, uh, and I may be mistaken, but I believe Brendan messaged me one time. We kind of started our YouTube channels near the same time, and we didn't know it then. Um, but I think after we both had our channels for a few months, he reached out, said, hey. Um, we kind of just eventually became friends through that. He just reached out uh, because we were kind of doing the same thing, asked me a few questions, and we kind of just built a friendship from there. And then it was about a year later um andrew brennan and i launched an nft together and then about a year after that we decided to merge our discords together too so it all just started with i think a random message and somehow it became a friendship and here we are now team alpha trading together baby what'd you say and mike was the only one that answered me andrew wouldn't answer me Oh, yeah. And you know what? Andrew actually told me not to talk to you. He's like, don't waste your time with them. <laughs> like, oh, shit. But to be fair, he said that about a bunch of people because back then we got so many fucking emails and text and all, most of it never led to anything. It was usually just somebody who wanted something. They'd get what they wanted and then ghost us kind of thing. He's like, don't even waste your time. I don't know why you check the emails. <laughs> and I'm like, well, you never know. Oh, 10% on Pally, OG Camo Gaming. Let's go. Good job. And Sammy Sosa in the house. What's up, Sammy? Thanks for tuning in. We miss you over here, Sammy. Um, somebody said, do you have any kind of refined reverse split play strategy that works? No, not really. Um, the only kind of strategy we've ever used and we have seen success with, if you know the reverse split is coming and you know enough about the company fundamentally, um, you can look to buy the rumor, sell the news type of thing. Um, but it's really hard to predict. Sometimes reverse splits run a day or two after it happens. Sometimes they just plummet and they plummet forever. I don't know. Uh, I wouldn't say I have a refined strategy for it. Um, I would say back in 2020, we had a lot of success with them that they just, it seemed like they always ran. Now in 2024, it's anyone's guess. Sometimes they run, but sometimes they plummet back down. I'm going to be honest, I avoid a lot of reverse split plays because I don't know what's going to happen with them. Jarrett says, some of his very best friends today are some people I wanted nothing to do with when I first met them. You know, it's kind of crazy. I won't get into the whole long story, but how Andrew and I met each other was very rough grounds too. Andrew and I were both general managers of a restaurant and us meeting each other was him being demoted and being screamed at by our boss. We had the same boss. The boss is yelling at Andrew on the front steps of this restaurant. And then I walk up and he's like, give Mike your keys. You're fucking out of here. Go home. And then like Andrew has to place the keys to his restaurant in my hands. And that was my first time meeting Andrew. And I'm like, oh, fuck, this guy's going to fucking hate my guts. Um, and somehow we built a, a really good friendship out of that there. Um, and the long story short, he ended up being re-promoted just a couple weeks later to a different location. But yeah, we, we definitely started off on rough territory there. Oh, good morning, Zelda. Zelda was making a lot of money with us yesterday. Good morning. Now that you're here, we can get the money train started. Let's see what else we're looking at here. We're kind of just playing the waiting game. Oh, JAGX is approaching a level I already had drawn on my chart. I don't know why I had it drawn at 15 cents. I got to scroll out to see why I put one there. I already scrolled too far, so I'm not sure why I had that there, but it's about to break it right now. Today's high was about 13 cents. And it's already 13% past that. Why did I have 15 cent marked? Oh, oh I see why. Let 
Looks like their old high from not too, too long ago was 20 cents. I would just get rid of that 15 cent level I had drawn then. And this one. So how can we play JEGX? Let's see. I would probably at this point wait for it to pull back and then look to play the next break is how I would do it. It looks like it might be experiencing that little bit of a rejection right here at 15 cents. Oh, Jason's quicker than me. Jason back from death just made 28% on JAGX. Let's go. Dean just made, I can't tell, but he made money on, <laughs> on PRZ, PRSO. Great job, man. I'd love to see you guys are making money. Zelda says she's watching PRSO and Pally. I would pay attention to them too. Zelda doesn't miss. She's got the crystal ball. Pally, we want to see it break 834. PRSO, I'm looking for it to break 207. Both of them are close. PRSO, I would also note, you can see all of these candles here have been respecting this 9 EMA as support. Every time it kind of skyrockets up, even when it pulls back, it keeps bouncing off of this 9 EMA, which is exactly what we're seeing right here too. But that long top wick right there is bearish. It, it's telling me that sellers are pushing it back down a little bit, but it's still respecting that 9 EMA as support. So you could look to maybe in the future here that it's going to continue riding it up and eventually break that 207 mark. And then right now you could also look to play a break of the VWAP on it. The VWAP is currently sitting at about $1.85 on PRSO. And if it breaks that VWAP, it's a good almost 12% channel to that breakout level. So you could take the trade here if it gets a, a VWAP breakout as well. Two different ways you could play this one right now. And then Pally is twice rejected at about 850 there. In this one's case, in your opinion, Brendan, we got 834 as the breakout level, but 850 it's got twice rejected. Would you rather play the breakout at 850 or would you think you'd take it at 834? That's only probably a 1% difference. 2%. Yeah. Well, see, we got another whole five minutes though. So, I mean, uh, probably wait for the 850. I think I'd concur because it's only 2% more. Yeah. Just like, you know, you play the break of that and then it gets rejected at 850. Like, wouldn't be great. I think the big break of the 850 would be best. I concur. Because if it only goes 2% up, you barely get a chance to load before it plummets back down, assuming it got rejected at 850 again. And it's already been rejected there twice. So I think this is what my trading plan would look like on Pally right here. But anybody who took that scalp when we mentioned it, you're up 20% right now. Um, they said, look at cooler cooler was a big winner, but we called that one more as a long-term opportunity. And then it just gave us some instant gratification is all. But as far as the breakout strategy goes, uh, it's not looking like a great day trade. There's nothing really to look at on this one. It's so far below everything and it's starting to barcode out a bit. So it's kind of finding the channels that it wants to stay in. Yeah, there's not much to show you on it yeah I would, I would keep high alert on pally right now and prso that's where almost all of my attention would be and jagx it did give us that pullback right here at about 15 cents so 15 15 is what i would call it but I don't like how this is uh, not a pocket aces setup in this regard, how you have basically four giant green candles in a row and then not a lot of pullback and consolidation anywhere. Just that brief little, and technically you got to wait for this candle to close too. This candle could close higher. So we haven't got a confirmed pullback just yet. 
um, I don't know. It's just not a pocket ace to set up. I typically like to see it stair step a little more healthily towards the breakout rather than just a couple of giant green boner candles. And then right now you have three candles being rejected right here at the high 15 cent level, almost 16 cents. So definitely not pocket aces on JAGX. But one minute left on the five minute candle, so we won't know for another 60 seconds yet. C Ozumba, I don't know what stream you've been watching, but all of these stocks we're covering might break out today. That's why we're covering them for you. JAGX FDA approval for use of oral medication. Oh, I see your screenshot. It was Robert Ainsworth that got the 900% play. Damn, mm -hmm. Robert. You're fucking killing it. And you're betraying me. What you in Brendan's stream for? That's right. Stay <laughs> Rob here. Robert's my boy. Hey, okay, yeah, okay. Stay here. Good job, Robert. 78 boys and girls are tight over here. Okay, okay. Oh, is he from your area? No, no, no. Oh, okay, okay. There's just 78 people on my stream right oh, now. Oh, I see, I see. I thought you were giving me a, a zip code. I thought you said 708. Oh, no. <laughs> or an area code. No, no, the Pittsburgh boys are 412. 412? <laughs> Any 412 in the chat? Uh, Dean says, Mike, did you make any money on the boat yesterday? <laughs> Unfortunately, no. I told him when I left the stream yesterday, I was going to go to try to make money from the boat. I didn't make no fucking money from the boat, but I did have a dope ass day. So it wasn't all for nothing. But no, I didn't make no money. I placed one trade. Um, I made a couple dollars. I placed another trade. I lost a couple dollars and I called it a day. I was like, fuck this. <laughs> I just took the day off kind of thing. I did a bunch of filming. I made a bunch of funny videos for you guys. You'll see them released over the next few days. Uh, Robert, you said, why is there ads on the live stream now? Does something change? No, there's pretty much always ads on the live stream. Unless you have a uh, YouTube premium, I think it's called. Then you can skip all the ads. Uh, what would you say your area code was, Brennan? 412. Oh, somebody said 724. I don't know what that one is. Oh, yeah. That's like the same thing. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Yeah. Some people's phone number is 724. Uh, it's like a little bit outside of Pittsburgh. Who is that, though? I need to pop on the stream. Um, Chris over here. It just says Chris. Chris says he's from the 724. Um, okay, and we did Chris. get that we did get that pullback on JAGX. So I put the breakout at like 1515 on this one, but it's still not a pocket ace setup. If anything, I think it may continue down here and maybe look to bounce off of this VWAP or possibly either this 9 or 13 EMA. And if it does continue down, I may look to play it as a bounce play off of one of these levels. But that's what we'd be looking at on Interactive broker stock yield enhancement program. That's what my trading strategy would look like right there on JAGX if it breaks. Pally is still flirting with, yeah, look at this. Now it's got four wicks that were rejected exactly at 850 on Pally. All the more reason why I'm just going to delete this 834 level, not even going to use it anymore. In this one, so we typically for nine times out of 10 for the breakout strategy, we draw the horizontal breakout level at the top of the body of the highest candle but in some cases like this 850 is a it's a known psychological resistance level and b there's now four different wicks that have rejected off of that exact price in that one's case i would respect that number over the top of the body of the highest candle so i've just went ahead and deleted that first 834 level and we're looking for the break of 850 only on pali Paul, Paul over here, Paul Fredericks, he said, I like both of your streams. And that's the first time I said that to a man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. I hope it's the last time, too. Oh, man. That's pretty funny, though. Yeah, it is funny. No sword playing over here. PRSO looks like it could be bouncing off of this 9 EMA as we speak. 
And as you look at all of these other ones here, it has been respecting it. It hasn't really dipped below this 9 EMA this morning yet. And look, it looks like it could be bouncing off right now. So that's a whole nother strategy you can play right there is if you can identify a possible place for it to bounce, you kind of just looking for more or less confirmation of that bounce right there. Let's go to the one minute, see what it's doing on the one minute. The one minute, it's kind of bouncing off the 48. But it is pushing up right here. You could look for some resistance near the VWAP. On the one minute, the VWAP's at like $1.85. That's at the same price on both. <clears throat> what blows my mind though is how is the 48 EMA on the one minute it's at $1.71 but at the five minute the 48 EMA is at $1.46 but the VWAP's in the same exact place but if you did want to play a, a bounce off this 9 EMA right here you're looking at like a 5% window to touch that VWAP and it does look like it's experiencing at least a little bit of resistance near the VWAP. So that's about a 5% channel you could possibly look to play. Or just wait for the breakout of instead either this VWAP right here at $1.85 or the breakout of the pre-market high, which is um, call it 207. Zelda says she's going to use 860 level for Pally instead of 850, give, um, being even more conservative. Um, and that's not a bad strategy. You could do that, absolutely. And if you did do that, the difference between 850 to 860 is only one more percent. So not a bad, not a bad idea. Honestly, I do that sometimes on these $1 breaks. Um, you, you'll see this strategy over and over again. We play a lot of stocks um, flirting with the $1 breakout. The $1 breakout, I think, is the most common one to give us a confirmation of the break and then immediately plummet down. That $1 level um, on most of these stocks, I, I, I don't even want to say most. I just want to say a lot of these stocks. I've seen it over and over and over again. It'll break a dollar. It confirms it. We get the close and open above a dollar. We take the trade and then it plummets down. That $1 level does that more to me than any other level. So um, what Zelda Chick just said there, that could apply especially to $1 level across a lot of these stocks. Maybe instead of playing a $1 break, if you see that that's where the break is, maybe play $1.10. Because I do see it fake me out all the time at a dollar. Zelda says she agrees on the $1 level, notice the same thing. She likes to play it from 90 cents to a dollar. See, I don't really, I don't really like the 90 cents to a dollar because to me that whole range is resistance from 90 cents to a dollar. Just because dollar is the obvious psychological resistance doesn't mean it'll touch a dollar and come back down. It may touch 95 and come back down. It may touch 93 and come back down. Maybe it's 97. Um, I think that whole range from 90 cents to a dollar is resistance in many cases. And Pally right now is flirting with that breakout we've been talking about. Currently at about 890 as we speak. And speaking of that, $9 then is going to act as obvious resistance. And look at that. That top wick just touched 9 and came back down. So any even dollar mark is going to always be obvious resistance on all of these stocks. I'll make this one red to signify that that's our $9 mark where it, it absolutely could be resistance. And from $8.50 to $9 is only a 5.7% channel. Uh, Vanka Relinas, your guess is as good as mine. Some reverse splits explode a day or two later. Sometimes it's a week later. 
Sometimes reverse splits don't do fucking nothing except plummet down. Your guess is as good as mine. I won't pretend to be the stock god messiah on reverse splits. Back in 2020, I thought I couldn't miss with reverse splits. They all went to the moon after reverse splitting. But here in 2024, it's anyone's guess. Sometimes they explode. Sometimes they don't. I'm going to be honest. Very true. I will say lately, though, there's been like a little reverse split narrative. Yeah. So it's a lot of reverse splits have been running lately. SNGX apparently got FDA approval yesterday. I know we were looking to play it yesterday. I think we did play it yesterday. I'd have to pull up my handy dandy trading journal, which I will do actually. I took the time to update it. I was like four or five days behind on updating my journal. But because I draw all these lines on my chart, it makes updating my trading journal very easy because I have all these horizontal and vertical lines that um, help me keep up to date with it. <coughs> SNGX <coughs> yesterday pre uh, presented us a 41% win and a 26% win yesterday. In our live stream, we played the 66 cent level on SNGX, and we also sent out a text with it at the 73 cent level. Two different times, SNGX gave us opportunity for profit yesterday, and somebody just told me yesterday they received FDA approval. If we wanted to play it today, it just broke the VWAP. The only level I'd look for on the breakout on SNGX would be 88 cents which was the high of yesterday, the top of the body of the highest candle. So I'd keep 88 cent on alert for SNGX, but it's not at the top of my watch list today. Pally gave us the confirmation above 850. So that's why we look to load within this yellow zone right here, which means in this one's case, we would have been loading about right here. So you would have looked to take the trade anywhere from about 873 to about 8 or you call it even $9 on that one. That would have been when we were entering. Anywhere in this green zone is good take profit. So literally every single one of you, anybody who took the trade, you are literally at least 1 to 5% in profit right now. There is nothing wrong with locking into 1 to 5% profit, especially in this shit market where most stocks are not running more than 10% higher. There's 10,000 publicly traded companies in the market every single day. Weeble right here has already sorted all of them into the top 20. As you scroll down here to the top 20, DZSI, which is number 20 on the Weeble top 20 gainers is only up 14%. If the top 20 stocks in the entire stock market are only up 14% or more, what do you think the other 9,980 stocks are doing? That means 9,980 stocks are up 13% or less in stock price. Most of them are probably down right now because we're in kind of an ugly market with rampant inflation, um, terrible CPI data, terrible PPI data, a president that can't even pronounce his fucking words on camera. Like it's, it's a bad economy, right? right here. So if you know 99.9% .9 of all these stocks aren't running 10%, maybe you shouldn't be looking for a 10% fucking profit because you have a 0.001% chance of that fucking happening. So nothing wrong with taking a one to 5% profit. And at least in this matter of seconds, that looks like it was great because it was pulling back down here. So you either took your one to 5% or you're currently down in your position. Um, real quick, Chris. So, you, you know, you're saying, uh, like, what is selling a put mean? You said on Robinhood, there's an option to buy put and sell put. I don't know what the sell put means. Yes, yeah, so, I mean, it, it's kind of a really long conversation, depending on how well versed you are in the options realm. But um, basically, it's cash secured puts. So you're selling the contract, you're receiving a premium, right? So that premium goes to you. But you're also agreeing that you will buy the stock 100 shares of it, because that's what each contract is worth, depending on how many contracts you have, right? Um, at the underlying stock price up until the strike price, uh, or up until the expiration date. So whatever strike price you sell at, if that stock ultimately doesn't hit that price, you just keep collecting premiums, right? Now, if the if uh, you know if the stock hits that strike price by the end of the expiration date, then you will be forced to buy the stock at whatever strike price that you agreed at, right? But this can be really, really amazing because, like, you know, if you know that you already want to buy it at those levels, then um, 
then like why not keep collecting the premiums until it hits that level and if it does hit that level then you uh you know you instead you know you just you buy it what you already wanted to at that level anyway so that's kind of the the short of it there but um yeah covered calls selling call options cash secured puts selling put options so that's that's the two ways of uh selling options and in those ways you collect premiums but you also would agree to buy or sell the contracts at those specific strike prices on or before at those uh, expiration dates, if that makes sense. Yeah, that made sense. Um, check this out. You can't see it unless you're in our Discord, but for everybody that's in our Discord in the Show Your Profit channel, N. Kelly just posted a picture of him and I'm assuming his wife on a boat. He says, yesterday he just arrived in the Bahamas and on his uh, boat taxi ride there, he made $300 scalping options on the QQQ. Thanks to our team for this excellent knowledge. He's getting 1% better every day, but made $300 while riding a fucking boat in the Bahamas. I mean, if that ain't the fucking life you want to live, I don't know what you're doing with your life right now. And that's exactly what you can expect inside of our community is life-changing knowledge just like that. Making money on a fucking boat, which is what I tried to do yesterday, but I decided to fuck off instead. <laughs> That is the alpha way. I'm going to go ahead and drop a link here. I ain't going to give anybody a hard sales pitch today. You either want to join a community like this. You either want to make life-changing money or you fucking don't. You're either going to click the link or you're not. Whatever. But I'm going to drop you the link here in just a second for the greedy little bastards who do want to learn how to make extra money online from the comfort of a fucking boat. Yep. Drop the link over here too. Oh, you guys watching? Also, if you want to learn how to trade options, we've got an entire masterclass dedicated on that and also option analysts in the Discord calling trades every single day of the week. Pretty soon, you're going to be making those gains like Robert over there, 900% on spy puts just from one simple channel break. Yep, yep. And then Zelda Chick, she's been joining. She's in our stream right now, too. She's in all of them. Um, what was it yesterday you made, Zelda? It was like three or five winning trades yesterday. Um, just with us live and she's one of our options gurus as well I think she came in originally started learning these easy strategies and she almost immediately immediately was like ah this ain't good enough we can do better so she started devoting a lot of time to our options um, coaches inside of our discord we always live trade every day 9 30 a.m. till about 11 a.m. our options coaches go live they teach you option strategies and they just kind of live stream options with you and Zelda chick started paying attention and she's a fucking guru now I swear she has a crystal ball <laughs> american sun says i make money in my sleep literally yeah man it's crazy what this can do oh right here zelda says i got 1600 percent off of spx yesterday um and then she said it paid for an entire semester of medical school for her son that is the alpha fucking way right there just literally paid for a whole semester of medical school with a single fucking options play that's incredible. That's crazy. She said, I posted my GL in options chat. That is incredible. I, I'm, I love uh, that we could be a part of that with you. Is that uh, um, puts? Uh, she didn't say. Had to be, right? I mean, yeah, Zelda, was that a put? I'm assuming dumb. so. Yeah, I'm assuming so. <laughs> if you made that on a call in this market, holy shit. You really are the messiah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah she said yeah, it was puts that's basically the the whole channel break almost you know you kind of waited a couple candlesticks for confirmation boom that thing dumped see if we end up we will end up filling this gap at some point i'm sure down to about 497.39 so yep yep so here I'm P-A-L-I, and it goes to show you why I said that 1% to 5% profit was plenty good enough for me in this market because 99% of stocks aren't running 5 fucking percent up in stock price. And look, it hit like that 5% up past our breakout. It immediately plummeted back down. It's in our stop loss window. To me, the stop loss doesn't really occur until it hits the bottom of that window. It's at the top of the window now, so it hasn't stopped out yet, but it is showing a little bit of downward momentum here. So on P-A-L-I, if it gets to the bottom of the window, I'm just going to go ahead and cut my loss on it if I'm still in my position, or I'm going to look for it to possibly bounce off of this VWAP or maybe the 9 EMA. Those are the couple things I'm looking for on P-A-L-I as we speak. But for you greedy little bastards that were paying attention, you already took your 1% to 5% profit, and congratulations. P 
PRSO is flirting with a VWAP breakout as we speak. The VWAP is currently at about $1.84. And it's flirting with breaking it. We'll have to see what it does right here. It seems to have gotten a pretty good healthy bounce off of this 13 EMA. And it's now 8% past that 13 EMA off the bounce. Sammy says, to the moon. Absolutely. For those of you that don't know, Sammy Sosa here in my chat is probably our longest subscriber slash fan has been tuned into Andrew and me since we had like one fucking subscriber on YouTube. And if you guys haven't noticed, I think Andrew and I are less than 30 days away from hitting 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. Um, at our growth rate currently, we are looking at less than 30 days. We will break that 100,000 mark and it shouldn't be too long before... YouTube sends us our uh, first official plaque. Uh, I'm kind of excited for it. And a lot of that was thanks to Sammy. She's been here since day one. Appreciate that. And just super chatted us $5. Thank you, Sammy. We appreciate that. Robert Ainsworth says Zelda has helped him start trading SPX in the afternoon. You can make a ton of money extremely fast but you can also lose it fast. Yeah, that's true with anything in the market. But look at that. So Robert's saying he's being helped by Zelda and Zelda's just another member. Zelda's not an official coach of ours or anything, a very valued member of our community, absolutely, but not even one of our coaches that you're learning from. So you can learn just from other community members. That's how powerful this community is. Look at that, PRSO did confirm a breakout of the VWAP right there. It's only about two to three percent past that that could be your loading opportunity here if you're going to play the vwap breakout i literally would only be looking for like a five percent profit or less a lot of times vwap breakouts don't result in a as big of a break as a pre-market high breakout does but vwap breaks do work out um, quite often and if it doesn't because no strategy is 100 percent, we always have our stop loss in mind and this one, the stop loss is at a pretty healthy position right here too because we already bounced off of this um, 13 EMA twice now. Um, you could put the stop loss right down here at about like a 7% stop loss if you wanted, maybe counting that it could bounce off that 13 EMA again. But I'd probably just still keep that stop loss right around 5%, which is right at the top of that um, 13 EMA. <clears throat> but this one's looking healthy. This one looks like it could be a good trade to get a 1% to 5% off that VWAP break. PRSO, keep it on watch. Speaking of long-term members, um, someone said they were, they've been here since uh, CYBL. That's, that's been a minute. But um, who has been here since like the BNGO days the nndm yep yep or even for me you know i started off talking about dividends so who's been here since i started talking about dividends i never did too much in dividends i made a couple videos on dividends but bngo yep that was a big big winner for my channel too um i can't remember but i think what was it maybe almost a thousand percent once upon a time on bngo that may have been one of our first 10 x's yeah, I think it was, yeah. NNDM, too, that thing was uh, highly talked about. What were some other ones? There was a lot. Um, NWBO yeah. was never a 10x for me, but NWBO, I first covered it like yeah. 23 cents, and that bitch went to 250 at one point. Yeah. Yeah, I never really talked much about that one until recently. Mike got me on the train. I bet you've been talking about it too much. <laughs> <laughs> Mike's got me on this train that just, you know, hasn't been, hasn't left the station yet. That's all right. It, it eventually will. And when it does, it's going to be the bullet train. Um, somebody said J-A-G-X. Okay. Breaking now? Tony remembers B-N-G-O. So J-A-G-X, awesome. I would have to move it up a hair here. So we got half of the confirmation we looked for. Um, but it is now currently breaking timer is right over my price uh, about 1520 was the breakout level on jagx you got two minutes left on the five minute candle we're waiting for confirmation right now 
but right now it is looking like it could possibly enter our entry zone. And I'm kind of I'm comfortable with where that stop loss is right there too, right below the VWAP and right below the nine EMA. But JAGX is looking healthy here as we head into market open. Be careful at 9.30 a.m., which is about 12 minutes away. 9.30 a.m., these stocks are going to get disgustingly volatile. You're going to see 40% moves in either direction to the upside and downside. It's very hard to play, especially because we're trying to use 5 to 7% stop losses right here. Uh, good luck with that when the, when the candle represents a 40% move in both directions. So a lot of good traders just sit out 9.30 a.m. to 10 a.m. And then about 10 a.m. look to develop a new watch list. Damn, Wall Street's is trying to start a fight here. He said, whose car is faster? Well, we, we haven't pitted his uh, Ferrari against me yet, but uh, I don't know. I think that Ferrari might have me. That thing looks mean as fuck. I don't know, man. It just sounds loud. It's really not that fat. I don't, I don't know. know mate. You think the Lam mean, you think the Lambo's faster than the Ferrari? Uh it it feels if you take away sound, it feels like it, but I see. I'm really not sure. I never put them next to each other. I don't know. One one day we'll have to. We'll get Chris to send the drone up and we'll drag strip them or something. Yeah. There's like that abandoned racetrack. I don't know if you've ever been there, but no, I seen, is pretty cool. Yeah, I seen you and Chris used it, but no, I haven't been there yet. Yeah. But don't be um somebody said your car for is for sure faster, not your average savage, but I don't know. Don't don't be don't be doubting that BMW. That all wheel drive electric motor that sends that bitch fucking launching so fast. Don't don't doubt them electric motors. Yeah, that definitely uh gets it moving quick. So JAGX did just confirm the breakout that we were looking. At any level you were looking for, it confirmed it. Because you could have also been looking for the top of all these wicks. And in either case, it confirmed that breakout as well. So this trade looks good to enter. No strategies 100%. It could plummet right back down. You're not a bad trader if it doesn't go your way. But because you're a good trader, you have your stop loss set right here, just like I have on my screen. So your um, risk is or your risk is minimized here. But right here, this looks like a good trade. We would look to enter right here near that second candle. So you'd be loading within this 2% window right here. And then we're going to sell anywhere in this green zone here. And that green zone is probably honestly too high because I just showed you 99.9% .9 of all the stocks in the stock market are up less than 10% right now. So why would you be looking for a 10% gain when that's only a 0.01% chance of happening? But right here would be our take profit zone on it. Let's hope JAGX continues to push up and gives us a nice opportunity here. Tim, I think that 72 Challenger is going to stay spinning at the start line right next to Andrew Chevelle. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what happened. <laughs> I like my two wheels never lost a race. Yeah, that's for sure. You and Mike should race. Yeah, um, I got my new... I haven't raced it. I haven't raced anybody yet. Well, you know what? I've never raced anybody on a motorcycle. That scares the piss out of me <laughs> on any of my motorcycles. I've never raced somebody, but I'd be interested to see that bmw 1000 rr race someone i bet you hit 100 miles an hour in first gear and there's still five more gears <laughs> that thing is quick dude it would take like a 1600 horsepower gtr to like maybe beat it but at least keep up with it Um, Jay says, how are you checking the average of all the stocks in the market are only up 10%? So Weeble already does it for you. If you come over here and click the markets tab, it's on the left hand side of your screen. If you're using Weeble desktop, right here's your top gainers, which means they've already sorted it right here is the top 20 stocks in the entire stock market, the top 20 most up in price. And the 20th right now is up about 15% in price. And then all these up are, um, all the ones above it are up more than 15%. But that tells you if they're the top 20, there's 9,980 stocks that are less than 15% up in stock price right now. So Weeble kind of already did the math for me and showed me that most stocks are not up 10%. Jeez. 
A A G X. So it's got this long top wick right here. That's a bearish indicator. It's just an indicator and you still have two minutes left on the five minute candle to see what it's going to do. But this long top wick is indicating a lot of selling pressure at this 16 cent ish level that sellers are kind of beating it back down. <laughs> Wall Street says, Brendan, why do you prefer Think or Swim over Weeble? Um, I answered it with just a little short sentence. But oh, I'm sorry, I must have missed it. Little, yeah, it's just a little, little more advanced timing. Like you know, I used to do when the when the bull market was really in swing. You know, I used to have a couple algorithms written on there that would do very, very well. You just basically click buttons, and that thing would just rock and roll. Um, yeah, I like the chart setups. Um, you know, there's just a lot more advanced features that you can do on it. But, you know, uh, it is a bit more complicated. Like, when I first started looking at that thing, I was like, oh, my gosh. Like, what, what am I even looking at here? So, you know, you go from, like, Robinhood, which is super simple, hardly has any features, to Thinkorswim that's, like, probably one of the most advanced. You know, there's others, but at least equal. And then, you know, Weebles probably lands right in the middle, has pretty much all the features you need for a beginner to intermediate, even expert trader. And it's also easy to read, easy to use. Okay. Okay. Savage says he's got a 09 Yamaha R1. Okay. 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 Well, that would, uh, that would, um, you know, it'd be a, it'd be a tight race right there. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, I ain't never racing nobody on my bike. I respect my life too much. I love motorcycles, but I am never going to be caught hot riding on my motorcycle. The most you'll see me do is on my older BMW. It's got cruise control and it's a very stable bike. Um, I'll, I'll do no hands. I kind of like that. If you guys follow me on my socials, you've probably seen me go no hands on my um, other BMW, but that's as reckless as I'll get. I don't fucking do nothing. No hot riding on my motorcycles. I know you've had that thing, but it sounds crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wasn't I wasn't racing nobody and it was in a se semi safe manner, but I ain't doing no racing. I ain't doing no hot dogging on that. And I'll tell you what, my, my new BMW, that 1000 RR, that thing scares the fucking piss out of me. My butt, my butt cheeks fucking clench so tight when I'm on that bike. <laughs> oh, shoot. Savage, you got uh, you got some work done to yours. Oh, I missed I missed the it's fully built part. Okay, what all? What do you want? It's probably a long discussion, but in in short, what do you have done to that puppy? Also, American Sun. Let me see a picture of this Ducati, man. I like. Oh, Ducatis. you got a Ducati? Uh, I've been wanting a Ducati. I like the Street Fighters. Those are pretty cool bikes. So Pally, look, it's almost doing exactly what I said right there with the stop loss. I said I was comfortable with the stop loss being just a hair under the VWAP right there. Look what it did. It came back down. It bounced right off of that fucking VWAP. It's almost like we can predict these things on this channel. Um, but Pally, nice little VWAP bounce right there. And JAGX, uh, like I said, this was a bearish indication with that long top wick. And the very next candle started some downward trend right there. Again, it was a bearish indicator. Indicators are never 100% accurate, but it is an indicator. It indicated the next candle could be bearish, and the next candle is bearish. So on this one here, I would look for a possible bounce off of one of these EMAs or the VWAP right here, which are all well under or within our stop loss zone. So that's what we're looking for on JAGX. Now, that doesn't mean it couldn't crash right back down. And in either note, we are less than four minutes. We are three minutes away from market open here at market open. It's going to be disgusting volatility. And we're actually going to wrap this stream up here. We haven't been going live through market open because it's just so difficult to trade from 930 to 10 a.m. on these specific strategies we're teaching you because we're looking for 5% profits. We're looking for 5% stop losses on these plays. And that's so nearly impossible to do when a candle goes 40% up and then 40% down. It, go, it goes right through all these levels we're trying to do with such tight windows. So we're going to be wrapping up this stream here in just a minute. If you guys have any last minute questions, you can go ahead and fire them at us. We will answer them to the best of our ability. And I will drop you our amazing Discord link one more time for you alphas that are tired of being fucking poor and want to get out of that nine to five rat race and learn how to make money from a fucking boat like we just seen one of our members do this morning. If you want to make money on vacation from the Bahamas, 
right there's your link. This is your best fucking chance. Um, Brendan, Andrew, and I have had a discussion here recently. We wanted to reach more people. We've all been thinking about our legacy a lot lately, the legacy we want to leave behind. And we are all super proud of the community we've built and what we've done and the thousands of lives we've affected all over the world. And we came to the conclusion that we just want to help more people. So we have recently drastically reduced our prices and shortened the time in our program, shortened your time to real results. So with drastically reduced prices now, this is your best opportunity to get inside of our amazing community. And I just dropped you the link right there. But don't click that link if you're not serious about taking control of your financial future because we're serious about helping you. Yep, yep. Ronnie said, what's the uh, minimum to start trading? I mean, there's people who start trading with anywhere, really. I mean, I think the lowest person I've seen come into our community was literally like 5 or $10. But what's crazy is, you know, after a couple of days, it was hundreds and hundreds of percent. Now, this was uh, quite a while ago. The market's not necessarily the same anymore. But I mean, on average, several hundred to a couple of thousand. I mean, that's usually on average. Obviously, the more the can be better. But like when you're starting out, it's more important to learn anyway, because like you're not going to start trading with, the, say you have a thousand dollars to trade. Like you're not going to start immediately trading with a thousand dollars like it's ready to start off with very small trades get consistent get wins and then slowly build up and by that time you'll be able to build your money up as well that you can invest more so i mean it's really starts with learning that's that's the most important thing yep yep savage says he's got full headers exhaust ecu unrestricted first and second gear stretched okay okay i should probably stretch mine um, dyno tuning, every little thing he could do besides a full motor rebuild. And he says he's yeah. considering putting a turbo in it. A turbo on a fuck yeah, bro. If you're already doing 125 in first, what the fuck do you need a turbo for? Yeah, that's crazy. Do you have the swing arm stretched as well? I wouldn't put a turbo on it. That that thing already sounds scary. Sounds like it would gap my 1,000RR BMW, and that's a top-of-the-line fucking race bike. All right, there's market open. We're going to wrap this up, guys. Um, around 10, 10.30 a.m., look for another text from me, the most amazing text you'll ever receive on the face of this planet. I will text you a watch list once we get through the market open volatility. And if you're not getting the text, well... You got the link of you got the link right there of nowhere to get them. That's all I got for you guys. I will catch you greedy little bastards in the next one. Savage said uh, to meet Jesus. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're gonna meet him quick with a turbo on that bike. Oh man! All right, peace out.